We're gonna start a project today making some African masks with oil pastel. We're gonna be using some other things too, but just to start with. First thing I want you to do is notice all the different shapes you can see in these different masks. Notice the oval eyes in this one, square eyes, round eyes. Here's kind of almost a teardrop shape for the eye. A lot of these have rectangular eyes, rectangular half circle, Let's look at the noses. Here's a triangle nose. This is a rectangle nose. Another, a couple more triangle noses. One kind of has a triangle here and here on the bottom, if you want to look at it that way. Some of these, kind of like mine, the nose goes into the eyebrows, like this one does that. This one, the eyebrows are straight. This one kind of does too, but the eyebrows are a slightly different color. Some of them don't have eyebrows. The mouths, some are open. Um, this one looks like regular lip shape. Some of them have little slits in them, rectangular ones. So we're gonna think about those different shapes and we're gonna put one in to make a unique mask for yourself. The first thing you want to do is we're making a symmetrical mask. So you want it to be the same on both sides. I'm going to choose, choose whatever shape that you want and do your eyes first. I'm going to do an oval nose and I'm going to connect mine to the eyebrows. You can choose whether or not you're going to have eyebrows and if you want to connect them or not. And then for my mouth. I'm gonna make a wide open mouth. And now at this point, you can decide on your face shape. A lot of these are oval, but not all. Some have kind of cool different head dresses in a way. So I want you to look first look, see how much space you have left on yours. Now we're gonna color these in with oil pastels. And over the oil pastel, we're gonna go over it with a black paint. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna make what's called a wax resist. These oil pastels are made of wax and the paint won't stick on the wax. So you want to make sure that you're coloring nice and darkly and color in what's going to resist the rest. Now notice that a lot of these traditional ones look more like wood tones, colors that you would find in nature, brown, red, white, orange, black. You can do those colors if you want yours to look more traditional or if you want to do a more modern one, you're welcome to do brighter colors. It's up to you as the artist. We're gonna take a liquid watercolor and we're gonna use that for our wax resist. The nice thing about doing it this way is it kinda doesn't matter if your oil pastel is a little dirty because we're gonna be going it over, over it with the paint anyways. So notice that on areas where I painted over it, the wax resisted it, especially I colored really hard with the blue. So see how there's almost no um, paint that's sticking on there. Now the white I was pretty loose with, so I didn't really get a good thick coat and a lot of the paint is sticking on there. Now this peach part, I chose not to go over that. So if you have a spot you don't even wanna go over it, you can. But look at this area right here where it's kind of pooling and this spots, I didn't paint any oil pastel, so that just plain painted nice and black for me. So we're gonna do that, and once it dries, we're gonna cut it out super slow like a sloth. We'll be using some marker caps and cardboard and some white paint 
on our colorful paper to make and print a design. And you can experiment with which side of the cardboard you use and how much paint you put on there. And you wanna to try to make a repeating pattern. So I've got three tall and four um, horizontal lines. So I'm gonna repeat that across my next row. Now, as you go down your paper, you can decide if you wanna keep that first row and do the same thing, or you could alternate it. So for example, I could start with the short line and then move on to the longer prints. It makes a cool diagonal as it goes. At this point, I have a good amount of my pattern done. And if for me, I'd probably just keep going, but I wanna show you guys a couple other things. So you could do, these are just marker caps. We've got some larger ones and some smaller ones. So I could have done um, one of that pattern, one of this circular pattern, and then you, I could repeat, I could alternate between these two rows. Um, but you do want it to look like a pattern of some sort. So I'd like you to experiment a little bit, but try to see if you can, what kind of pattern you can make that repeats. As I got to the bottom, my stamp was printing onto the table and that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Your fingers are going to get so dirty. Also, once again, not the end of the world. This little cardboard guy, he's going to get soggy, not the end of the world. What you're gonna do when you're finally finished with your dirty hands, which you have not washed yet, you're gonna throw this little guy away if he's super soggy. You, If you have a paper towel, if you really get super dirty, you can wipe your paper towel hands off while you're doing it if it's kind of messing with your process. And you can wipe off the table. You're going to, at that point, if you're all the way done, take this stuff to the trash, throw it away, wash your hands in the side sinks, and then we're gonna get your masks while this dries and cut out your mask super slow like a sloth. Then you're gonna go to the glue station, quickly spread some glue on the back of this and lay him down on top of your background print. All right, I've got a quick bead of glue on my guy. I'm gonna take him over here center him on the background. It's okay that all my paint is not quite dry. I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful. My mask was pretty big. So I'm gonna press down and there we go. You also wanna make sure as always that your name is on here. But if you can put yours down in the corner before you get started, that's gonna be your best bet. And then you'll carry it with two hands flat like a pizza and put it in the drying rack.